In this video, I'm going to make some recommendations for the best specs for an AI PC. Now, before we really jump into this, let's take a look at the types of AIs that we're talking about. This is Comfy UI running Stable Cascade. It's capable of producing very high quality images in a couple of seconds, not a couple of minutes or less and it's capable of producing very high resolution images. You need to download about 30 gigabytes of models to run it just to start off. My installation of Comfy UI and Stable Cascade takes up about 150 gigabytes. Another software which I think is representative is NVIDIA Chat RTX. Now it's basically a version of chat GPT, but it's running on your RTX graphics card. The initial file is 35 gigabytes, but the actual complete download, I lost track of it, is about 80 gigabytes or more. It runs locally using one of the open source large language models that it downloads, but you can also change the source and you can use your own data on your own system. So you can ask it about one of the recipes that you have on your computer. Can you give me a recipe for lasagna and it will find the recipe on your PC and give you some details. The recommended graphics card for Stable Cascade is a 20 gigabyte card and for RTX chat you are recommended either an 8 gigabyte card or a 16 gigabyte card. I'm actually running this on an 8 gigabyte card which requires quite a few adjustments to make sure that everything runs properly. This is an amazing piece of software. This is Premiere Pro 2024. It allows you, when you open up a file, it will create a transcript of everything inside the file. So for some of my 20 or 30 minute videos, this takes quite a bit of time and it allows me to actually edit the video, not just using the timeline, but also using the transcript. So I can find a particular part of the timeline by just clicking on the words that are spoken in that part of the timeline. It's pretty amazing and it is a huge, huge productivity gain for anyone who's doing video editing. Now the point about this software is that unlike previous versions of AI, this actually does most of the work as soon as you open the software and before you get to work. So you really want this process to be very, very fast. And the thing is, this kind of AI takes a bit of time, even for a very powerful CPU. So I've just ch shut down chat with RTX and it says video memory released. Chat with RTX was using all of the video memory on my system. Moving on to the recommendations. Now, Amazon is having its spring sale. That's going to last until the 25th. And if you're doing a DIY PC build, it may be a good time to actually uh, catch a few bargains. The recommendations start here. Now we're gonna I'm gonna recommend for your CPU for the kind of stuff that we're doing in Premiere Pro, you want a fast CPU. Traditionally, things like that run the AI stuff tends to run on the GPU, but with Premiere Pro, the really useful stuff runs on the CPU. We have got the Core i9. There are two variants. One has KF, the other one is simply K. This one is 574. The K one, which I think is the one that comes with integrated graphics. This one is $540, eight performance cores, 16 efficiency cores. This is the kind of setup we want to be able to run the kind of software we were looking at in Premiere Pro. Another CPU you might want to use is the 12900. This is much less expensive, but it is the 12th generation one, somewhat fewer cores, but it will allow you to process the transcript AI very quickly inside of Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro uses a lot of graphics acceleration that relies on the graphics card. Now, the Core i9s can go down to about $314 for the 12th generation. This is important because the 12th, 13th and 14th generation are all running on the same motherboards. So you don't need to upgrade the PC to upgrade the CPU. AMD has the Ryzen 9s. These start at $280 for the 5000 series one. The 7000 series one is much better. It's coming in at $390, well worth that extra money. But this guy here is running DDR5 and the DDR5 memory keeps getting faster and faster. Whereas we're kind of maxed out on the memory for the AM4 socket. 
Now there is a variant which is the 7900 which has X3D at the end. Th these variants, there are a couple of them, maybe more than that now. They are for gamers and you spend a little bit more for these CPUs. They give you faster gaming performance. And this is not a recommendation for gamers. It's mainly for content creators and for AI enthusiasts. So if you are into the gaming, there are lots of other channels you can follow for gaming advice. Alongside the CPU, you also want to get a fairly powerful motherboard, a decent motherboard, because the storage, the input output, that's all going to depend on the motherboards. Now, the core recommendation for the AI PC is going to be an NVIDIA graphics card. And I'm actually going to specifically recommend the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte variant. This was originally conceived as a gaming GPU coming in at around $550. You can get it now for about $450 and it is a good compromise. It's not very expensive. It is not very popular with gamers. So and that's one of the reasons the prices have come down. And it has also got a lot of VRAM. That's going to turn out to be very important with software like Stable Cascade and also RTX Chat or Chat with RTX. Now, a recent alternative are the Super cards. These are the 4070 Super and the 4070 Ti Super. The 4070 Super starts at 12 gigabytes and it's more powerful than the 4060 Ti, but the lack of memory is going to be a real downer if you want to work with some of the more powerful AI models. Now, all of the Super cards, the 40 series Super cards are ex extremely good, extremely good value fairly affordable by NVIDIA standards. And this one here, the ASUS Super Gaming, this guy at 849 and 16 gigabytes, the 4070 Ti Super, this is one that I would recommend if you want to get something that's pretty decent, very powerful, and somewhat more affordable than the more powerful cards out there. If you cannot afford these really powerful high memory cards, or if you just want to keep your lower memory card, having good system memory and lots of system memory is useful. I would recommend minimum of 32 gigabytes of fast DDR5 memory. Now, if you're going with the Intel CPUs, some of those can be run on DDR4 or DDR5. I recommend DDR5 and the 5000 series AMD cards, uh, AMD CPUs, those run on DDR4. That's one of the reasons I would prefer the 7000 and the 8000 series CPUs. Now the, the CPUs, 32 gigabytes is plenty. 64 gigabytes is enough. You don't really need much more than that unless you're going to be using After Effects, in which case maybe going up to 128 gigabytes might make some sense. Now this guy here is a hard drive. So this is the type of thing that we actually don't want. We want the SSDs. Let's take a look to see how much damage the SSDs will do in your pocket. The NVMe SSDs, these are going for about 150 for a two terabyte, for two terabyte NVMe. They were about half that price in September. When we're looking at the traditional SATA SSDs, this one is 134. And then we see some of the cheaper ones. These are 95. I think quite often I would recommend the more expensive ones because they're higher quality. But if you're storing models that you can easily download from the internet, it's not so important to have very high quality storage. It's something that can be easily replaced. If you've run out of local storage on your computer, if you haven't got enough connections for SSDs, you can get a USB extension that allows you to run an SSD from outside your system. It's a nice one from Sabrent here. And they also have something that you can do uh, when it comes to NVMe drives. These ones are really useful once you start running out of space in your system and you want something that's really fast outside of your system, an external SSD or NVMe drive. 